Hey kids, it's England Teen here, and got another Marvel vs. DC going. But let me head something off at the pass. In the middle of recording all of the comics, the way we do it is we read it, we record the uh, the review, and then we go on to the next book. This allows us to put it together as we go, rather than just spend one entire day reading 30 or 40 books. That being said... I just got a new microphone for my birthday. Happy birthday to me. And uh, so some of these were recorded with the mic I'm using right now. And some of them were recorded with the older one. Now we've had comments about sound issues. It's too loud. It's too soft. It's too loud. It's too soft. It's literally we get just as many for both. So we've been adjusting and readjusting and try to get this perfect because, uh, you know, I'm listening to it on my phones or on my television, and I can hear it. But we do take all criticisms to heart, and we try to improve as we go. It's uh, Maybe sometimes, I guess, we over-adjust in one way or the other. And finally, about the scoring. I left it off the last video, felt, you know, maybe the new format doesn't quite fit with the scoring, but... All the comments we did get were, hey, I like the scoring, bring it back. It's what separates your reviews from the other reviews. So there you go. We're keeping the scoring, and let's get this ball a-rolling. The one-star books are the worst of the worst. The ones you should definitely avoid at all costs. It's America number five. So I did a full-length review on this, and I recommend you check it out. It's one of my favorite things to do every month, and... I have to say I, I like America number five because basically it's this very deep and introspective look at what a young lesbian Puerto Rican woman would have to do in order to, uh, while she's traversing the country, deal with adversity and the, the issues of the day, basically. I mean, you know, we for some reason racism has been brought back up as well as gender identity and the uh, the emotional impact of a story like this, the intellectual view that you just don't receive in other comic books that you get from this one is palpable. The fact that they really turn this character into somebody that anyone can relate to is amazing, and I, I just have nothing but praise for it. Secret Empire Brave New World number four is an anthology uh, title. The Brave New World is an anthology title. And so the, uh, well, usually I would say the quality of the stories vary. Like Moon Knight is a road warrior kind of thing. She meets up with people who dress like they're from the freaking road warrior or a Phil Collins video. One or the two. The second one is an Emma Frost story where they're walking down an, uh, a red carpet at an award event and she gets attacked. It's absolutely useless and I forgot it was in there. I had to look it up again. And the third one is the Namor story where uh, Marvel basically continues to de-ball Namor. I mean, it, overall the stories suck and by that I mean all three of them do. There's no, no saving grace. There's no redeeming value. I, I'm i waiting for the Namor breaks out and becomes Namor again scene but that hasn't happened. Hopefully in the future because otherwise this is bad. The two star books are merely bad with maybe a little something just to keep them from going over the edge. Green Arrow number 27. Boy do I just think that this ninth circle thing has to go away. They've been riding this train since the very beginning. And uh, actually there was a scene where he was fighting them on a train. So yeah, okay, the, the wheels go round and round. Anyway, it, it it's, it's just a dull story, guys. First of all, they're a faceless corporation. So it's not like Green Arrow's going up against Darth Vader. He's going up against the Stormtroopers. We have no central figure here. Now, of course, this time around, they've got him teaming up with the Flash. Now, Wonder Woman looks like Superman's next. But overall, it just isn't a, a compelling enough story because there's no hook. There was a hook when he was on the street level. People were being affected. The city was being affected. But now it's all big corporation, faceless stooge. It's just, it's unrelatable. Harley Quinn number 24, Family Circles. Wow, is that so right. 
Okay, so the book begins, and she does a little bit of a battle with Clock King and uh, Sportsmaster. But then it's page after page after page after page of family drama. Not bad, but this is not the book I would I, I can recommend to anybody to pick up if, at all, actually. I mean, I mean it, like I said, it's not bad. It's just... Well, yeah, you get some of her back backstory. You get some insight into who she is and why she is. I guess that's good. But it's just so wordy. So wordy. <laughs> and I sound bad because it's like, oh my gosh, this is a lot of reading. But it's just, uh, it's punch something sometime, guys. Secret Empire 6 is really bad. It just, it's a horrible book. Thor shows up for a couple of things, so, you know, naturally cover. But uh, he breaks a rock and then tells all the heroes that are trying to escape their base, go. And that's it. What's horrible about this is Marvel really had a chance to do a huge introspective issue. Where not only is it talking about the characters, but they're talking about Marvel themselves. When it ke uh, Hawkeye has this uh, uh, monologue about... Uh, heroes fighting heroes. Doug Ernst did a whole video on this speech, so I recommend that video for for you there. But uh, if it was turned into something where it's Hawkeye is really talking about Marvel Comics, it would have been so deep. But instead, it's just, yeah, hero to hero, and then it's completely wiped away. This book should have been good. This book was not. Snickers presents Supergirl and Jesse Quick and the Fastest Women Alive. So there's a charity race, and they even make fun of the fact that uh, Superman and Flash are there. Well, you wish you were down there? Uh, actually, I'm glad I'm off their f I'm uh, off my feet for a while. So they they do address the whole Superman Flash charity races, and uh, so they race. And then at the end, the the parasites there, and uh, they use the Snickers bars to fill up the uh, the crowd in the uh, stadium with energy and the parasite can't absorb all of that energy and he passes out. I read this after the KFC one and in all honesty this was just took itself too seriously. Comparatively the KFC wins. This one maybe if I read it first I would have appreciated it more but it seemed more preachy and took itself way too serious to be fun. It should have been a lot not more fun a lot more silly. And I think overall it just dropped the ball. Spider-Man 2099 number 25, the final issue of the series. Tempest gets kidnapped to the past and Spider-Man has to take on one last mission in the past and then has to break her out of the same Blackthorn prison that Miguel helped design. As the wrap-up for the city, this issue should have been a lot more than it was. While there are some fine moments in it, like how finally it becomes the year 2100, but otherwise... It feels rushed and incomplete somehow. It's almost as if Peter David walked into Marvel's office with a finished manuscript in his hand, only to be told that since this was the last book, he'd have to do a complete rewrite in five minutes. The story happens, and then boom, it's over. The saving grace of the issue is the art, which keeps it from being horrible and makes it just merely bad. The three star books. Now, these are the ones that are average. They didn't elicit a response from us, good or bad. Injustice 2, Chapter 15. You know, when you get them by chapters, it's 99 cents, but it's not very long, so it's hard to grasp a big story or anything like that. In this case, it's a whole bunch of posturing, and oh my gosh, what's happening? As Ra's al Ghul uh, brags that he stole the children of the heroes, and if they bother him while he's committing his plan, which he says is going to kill a lot of people, he'll kill the kids. Of course, you know, if you say that to Batman, who he now has Alfred, uh, Batman's just going to chase after you. So there's not a whole ton of story in this as much as it is plot. But what makes up for it is a great last frame. I mean, I, I really have to say it's a decent storyline so far. And I, I've been liking Injustice 2. This is just one of the weaker chapters. But it really does have a great last frame to it. 
Monsters Unleashed number four, the new intelligentsia have captured Kid Kaiju and busily set about bullying him into creating monsters for their use. On the other hand, this issue is a bit of an unabashed action frenzy that any 12-year-old would love. The problem is that the parts of the issue that aren't fight scenes contain bombastic, corny dialogue that only a 12-year-old would love. The issue is trouble balancing whether it wants to be entertaining to adults or kids. The art is pretty good as always, but the fact that the plot is paper thin detracts from the overall story. Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man number two. So this issue was a lot of fun. I mean, you know, there's uh, Peter's secret kind of sort of sister, his chaotic, unfortunate coffee date with Rebecca, uh, what looks like a plot building up involving Riri Williams. It might just kind of be a spy thriller. But the book is kind of way, uh, it's got a lot of exposition, and it's way too light on action. But in its defense, it's all kind of played casual with the uh, intention to make the le- reader laugh. The art is also a little bit consistent. Well, on the other hand, Spidey himself is very fluid and flexible, which is a good thing. On the other hand, the faces are inconsistent, and the entire thing seems rushed. Uh, it's far from being perfect, but it's a pretty fun read, and, you know, that's good enough. Star Wars, Poe Dameron number 17. So this is a talking head issue, and by that I mean it's mostly discussion and exposition and conversation. Even when they're flying around and doing and showing action scenes or, you know, things that float forward the plot, it's still just dialogue and description, dialogue and description. I mean, it's filled. It's like a novel with pictures in it and... But the thing is, there are really some interesting moments in this. One of the best parts is when they bring up rebel finances. I know that's kind of silly considering especially, you know, you might not enjoy the first uh, movie, The Phantom Menace, or the first movie, you know, the first of the sequels, because of all the talk about politics and such. But the rebel alliance needing money is not something that's ever been brought up, or at least that I know of. So overall, it's an interesting book. It's just not a particularly exciting one. Royals number five. So the inhuman royal family face doubt and self-incrimination when Ronan the Accuser traps them in an individual guilt-induced prison on Hala. Hala. This issue is a perfect example of an okay but not anything amazing comic. It never achieves greatness but doesn't slump into garbage either. The characters are well written and the premise is interesting, but the execution is a bit bombastic in places in dialogue and it can be overdone well there just isn't enough here to recommend it over some of the other comics released this week and if you're not already a fan of the inhumans there really isn't a lot of reasons to pick up this book thor ragnarok prelude number two this is basically just a retelling of the incredible hulk starring edward norton tim roth and Liv tyler it begins right where the previous issue left off with the fight of the college campus and then it faithfully depicts every single scene in the movie and there are a few new tidbits but none of them are large enough different enough or important enough to really matter it's just an occasional new line of dialogue here or there now the art is pretty good but if you've seen the incredible hulk you know the story So there's nothing really much to say about it, which is why it's getting three stars. Totally Awesome Hulk number 21. Now in this issue, Amadeus Cho finds the Weapon X facilities and they decide to go in. They're going to rescue the kid they met in the last chapter, Domino and him, who is just about to be turned into a gigantic Hulk slash Wolverine slash cyborg thing that they've been doing. There is the cultish aspect to the book, and that's an entertaining, you know, the the entertaining scene, seeing this kid go through all of the stuff that he signed up for but didn't really know what he was signing up for. Overall, though, I I was not a big fan. Uh, Once again, the people who've been around for a long time don't seem to know what they're doing while Amadeus Cho has all the answers. There's at least one scene where Wolverine says, yeah, I'm the Alpha, and, you know, they just don't listen to me. But overall, I don't know. The book's just, eh. U.S. Avengers number 8 finds the Iron Patriot in a cell with an almost comatose sunspot, or whatever they're calling him these days. 
and she's trying to escape, and she's got 16 minutes to do it, and she uh, keeps playing in her head the whole Iron Man thing where he's in a cave with a pile of scraps, you know, that kind of thing, and what can she do to help them get out of their cell. And on one hand, this is a whole uh, old new character better than the old character story, but on the other, kind of have to applaud the ingenuity you know they set it up in the beginning how she's going to get out of this and it had a pretty decent payoff overall it's not a bad book but it wasn't a particularly exciting one because since they did overplay their hand in the beginning you saw everything that was about to happen the four star books are good they're strong issues and we can actually recommend them Aquaman number 26. Aquaman just continues to be an excellent series. I think only once or twice has there ever been an issue that dropped out of my favorites list. And, it, I mean, this book, the, the title, it just continues to be solid from start to finish. Also, the covers, look at these covers. Both of them are just spot on. I don't know, I think I, I named Mira as the best cover for DC, but after looking at it for a while, I love this uh, Dolphin cover. I mean, this is a poster. If anybody ever knew what, who Dolphin was that wasn't an avid D, DC reader from like 40 years. The story itself, uh, Aquaman's doing his Batman of Atlantis thing, uh, trying to stop the, the new king from uh, suppressing everybody, oppressing people. He meets up with a ragtag bunch of rebels, you know, that kind of thing. Overall, though, I mean, this is something to pick up. It is a great book. Batman number 27. So, the war between Joker and Riddler continue, and this time they have a pawn that they pass back and forth trying to do each other's bidding and such, threatening his family. Batman, of course, does his best to save him, and his child gets messed up. Now... What's really cool about this is there's an ending that made me go, oh, okay, okay, yeah, all right. It's kind of the same way that it was the death of Gwen Stacy, uh, where, and I'm not comparing the two books, by the way, but the title of the death of Gwen Stacy came at the end because it couldn't spoil everything, and the, this one has the similar thing, and it was just cute, and it was clever, and I got to say I really like this book. Uh, and I, I've, I've been liking the whole story so far, so pick it up, check it out. Nightwing number 25, an extra-sized anniversary issue. This is the finale of the Blockbuster Saga. If you guys have been following that, you've been realizing this is a pretty good story. And if you haven't, when it comes out on trade, at the very least, pick it up, because it's a pretty good story. I mean, you know, this is the climax, so it's... You would think there would be a whole ton of action, but there really isn't. I mean, there's a few pages at the beginning, but then it's kind of funny. I, I just did Harley Quinn's review, and I mentioned all the dialogue. Oh, my gosh. This has a lot of dialogue, too, after the action, but it's interesting. So it's not a slog. It doesn't take so long to read. It doesn't feel like, oh, my gosh, just get to the point here. You know, it's exciting, it's interesting, it's witty banter going along with it. It's just entertaining and enjoyable. Pretty much all throughout the books. It's a good book. Recommend it. Super Sons has just been a ton of fun. This is one of the best titles that are being released by DC, which means it's one of the best titles being released by the big two. That being said... Um, what we have here is basically Superboy wants to go out on patrol with Damian Wayne, and Damian Wayne thinks it's a training session, but he's acting like a Gotham hero in Metropolis, so people are like way too frightened, and he's stopping them for jaywalking and stuff. And then, of course, the, the Teen Titans come in, and normally I'm not a big fan of Damian Wayne, but in this dichotomy, he's just perfect, and him shunning... Uh, Jonathan Kent because he's not a teenager and they're called the Teen Titans is just tons of fun. Really, I, I, this book right here is just about these two heroes and it's, uh, I mean, it's just, I, I keep saying the word, but seriously, this is just a fun book. The five star books are the best of the best of the week and really accomplish what they set out to do. Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, number nine. Mary Jane and Peter Parker have to deal with 
the consequences of MJ unknowingly melding the venom with the venom suit. And uh, it's it's an amazingly strong issue to pardon the pun. The storytelling is on point with absolutely no wasted scenes. There's no uh, extraneous dialogue. And uh, there's nothing that doesn't drive the plot forward. It's just done perfectly. You know, and this one this one's a home run. The best part of it is seeing uh, MJ's life as a wife and mother and businesswoman change subtly as the symbiote kind of gains more control over her. And it kind of leads to a brilliant dual fight where MJ battles the symbiote for control over her mind while Peter has to defeat its physical form. And it proves to me that uh, anyone who doesn't think that a married superhero can be cool is to quote Biff Tannen, a butthead. Suck it, Casada. All righty, so Green Lantern meets Colonel Sanders, and uh, this is everything you would ever expect from a Green Lantern meets Colonel Sanders comic book. I mean, at some point, Green Lantern gives him a ring, and uh, it's a temporary one, and Colonel Sanders says, oh, that's great, but I'm going to do it my way, and turns it into a bucket of chicken. It is just so freaking out there. And the storyline is is that Colonel Sanders wants to bring his zingers to the universe because everybody needs heartburn. And Larflees steals all of them. So they go after Larflees to save all of the zingers. This is unreviewable, kids. I'm serious. What can I say? It's stupid? You know it's stupid. It's Colonel Sanders meets Green Lantern. It's silly? Yeah, I mean, it's there. It's got incredibly bad dialogue. It's one big advertisement. It's awesome in every way, shape, or form. I'm five-starring this, not because it's like, ooh, like the Watchmen, good. It's just because it is such a ridiculous advertisement comic book that it works. Superman number 27. Now, I did a full-length review of this and recommend you go check that out. It's a lot of fun. That being said, this is an excellent book. It's one of the best uh, Superman books out there. Superman is a family man now, and they really do stick their, their guns on this. And that's possibly the best dynamic that's going on in this book. However, what is really pushing it is a narrative that you can show liberal values and conservative patriotism in the same book, in the same character. You don't have to be far left to saying America's bad. You don't have to be saying that uh, inclusion, that's in here. Coexistence, they go over that even though, you know, that was a little bit overboard. Feminism is present here. But it's done in such a way that makes people feel good and not isolated. So there you go, gang. One big bundle of DC versus Marvel reviews. Let's check out the scores. Marvel Comics had two one stars, two two stars, seven three stars, zero four stars, and one five stars. They were 12 comics, score of 32, and an average of 2.67. DC Comics, on the other hand, had zero one stars, three two stars, one three star, four four stars, two five stars. 10 comics, a score of 35, and an average of 3.5, so shockingly to no one, DC Comics wins again. So there you have it, gang, another week and another win for DC Comics. Man, it's been since May that Marvel has won. I mean, they're, it's getting bad. I mean, Secret Empire has really tanked them. You're, I don't think they're going to get a win on a week that America is being released. Next week is Iceman, so let's hope. Fingers crossed. But what did you think of the reviews? And I mean the reviews themselves. I said at the beginning, I, I've recorded these with two different microphones, so I know there's a sound discrepancy, and I apologize for that. That's the last time. We're I'm going to be using this one from now on. Jack's going to be using the other one. And we do our reviews separately. But we are always listening, so, you know... If, it's too loud tell me i'll turn down the 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 mixed if it's too quiet tell me speak up you know that kind of thing we got, we're always paying attention we're always trying to be better i know it seems like we're not considering sound is our number one complaint but we really are trying to get this right <laughs> anyway uh once again what did you think of the reviews what did you think of this one i know i'm gonna catch hell for colonel sanders and green lantern but my goodness 
for what it is. I'm going to do a full review defending my five star on Green Lantern and Colonel Sanders. So put your comments, good or bad, in the comment section below. I actually try to respond to everybody. Uh, sometimes I can't or I, I don't get around to it and I apologize, uh, but I really do try. And uh, if you haven't already, click like, click share, share again, share one more time. And don't forget to hit subscribe and that notification bell if you haven't already. And don't forget, oh, Patreon, go on over. We've got some patron-only content coming uh, definitely in August, which we're calling Kirby Month. Good things happening. you know. So uh, if you decide not to do that, that's fine. You know, thank you very much for watching, and thank you very much to the people who already have. We're going to put those names in the credits. Life's like a movie. Write your own ending. Keep believing. Keep pretending. We've done just what we've set out to do. Thanks to the lovers, the dreamers, and